How are you doing? Hello, Mark Hanson. How are you? Just fine. Thanks for coming in today. Yeah, well, my pleasure. It's nice to meet you. Beautiful day out here and in this old historic school, too. Yeah. Something else. <laughs> uh, so we're looking forward to finding out more about you uh, so that the, the citizens can just understand about the choices they face. Uh, it's going to be a pretty tough decision. There's a, a lot of qualified candidates. Yeah, there are. And uh, it's, it's fortunate for Collierville, though, that, that the candidates top to bottom are good candidates. So uh, it's, it's, you know, there really there are some tough choices, but that's a good thing. Good. So, well, we're going we're gonna to be in here. All right. Uh, have a seat. Um, oh. So um, uh, how did you get started on this journey? Well, um, I, I, as a, as I've been a, a student in public schools, never been to a private school, as, a, as, my, as has my wife. I love the public schools, I care deeply about them, uh, and all of my children, uh, uh, three children, and all three have gone all through the, uh, one, my youngest son is a sophomore uh, at Collier High School, but all three have gone through elementary, middle, and, and um, high school here. So I know what the system is, I know what it can be, and I uh, feel passionately about it. I know that it's a huge undertaking to get this thing off the ground. And um, I think because of my, my experience and my knowledge that I wanted to be part of that uh, to give birth to this system. So when you were thinking about this in your mind and, and uh, you finally got to the day where you, you told your wife or close friends, hey, I'm thinking about running. Um, what was their reaction and, and what would they say uh, motivates you? Well, actually, Sarah, my wife, was one of the, one of the people that was uh, trying to convince me to run. And uh, although, uh, given how hard it is to run a campaign, <laughs> uh, I don't know whether she'd make the same decision today, but I think she would. Uh, but I, I think that given the uh, what happened in Memphis and uh, the uh, opportunity that we had to create a system and given my uh, previous involvement in the community uh, that I think that uh, she, we thought I would be a good fit to be on the, on the school board. And, um, and it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm real excited about it. I think if, if I'm elected, I think it's going to be a lot of hard work but it's going to be probably one of the most rewarding things that I could think of doing in, in my life, really. So. Uh, that, that's great. Uh, it is going to be a lot of work. Uh, any idea about how many hours uh, it might take? Well, I, I figure that uh, if the pay is $2,400 <laughs> a year, it's going to work out somewhere around uh, 75 cents an hour. So <laughs> if that gives you, if you can do the math. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll do that in a minute. <laughs> um, so you've got plenty of time to put in cause it, uh, to this, this, uh, this job? I will make time for it. Uh, I have a busy job at uh, FedEx in the legal department. Uh, I have, and have, it, have in the past had a pretty busy travel schedule, but uh, had, I've had to work around that. I'm also on the planning commission here in Collierville, and um, and so I'm very involved. But I, it's going to be an effort to make time to do it. But you know, all things worth doing are worth making the time to do. So, so have you had uh, experience with educational systems before? Yeah. Um, well, I have. I have a master's degree, a uh, bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and a law degree. And uh, when I was in private practice before I came here in 92, uh, I was a school board attorney for Sullivan County, Tennessee, which is up in the up top northeast part of the state, about 500 miles from here. And it's a, it's a fairly, it's a large system. And uh, I, I worked with the board of education there, the school board and the superintendent and handled all the issues having to do with transportation and um, you know, the teachers and uh, the snow days and all that stuff. So uh, I do have an ex I do have some experience there, that, which I think is unique among the candidates running this year. So and and what will how how will you put that to to use? I mean, did you learn some things 
about school superintendents or about boards as you're sort of observing everything? Or? I, I think it's all of the above. I, yes, I attended all the board meetings. Uh, I think I have a very good understanding of what the respective roles of the um, board vis-a-vis -vis the superintendent. You know, the board sets the policy and the board has certain uh, statutory obligations, but the superintendent really runs the system. He's the, he's the chief operating officer of the, of the enterprise, and, um, and, and often there's a dynamic there between the superintendent and new boards that they have to feel each other out on what their respective roles are. I think I have a pretty good understanding of what that is. And having observed it and been involved in those decisions, I, I also think that I have a sense of what the role of good, plain common sense uh, will have in the, the uh, operation of the school board. And, uh, and how it will affect the, the, uh, the, the system, of the new system. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the hiring of a school superintendent is going to be a, a big issue and really pretty complicated. Uh, I'm assuming that the three or four finalists, they're all going to be qualified. They're going to be, uh, they're all going to, uh, going to be fine candidates. Is there anything in particular that would attract you to one school superintendent candidate over another that you think would, would be important for this town? Yeah, of course. Um, first of all, um, I, I think you have, to, you have to look at a man of integrity, personal integrity with a reputation for fair dealing. That's important not only to the students, but it's also important to the, the teachers and the non-professional staff that are employed. He's got to have a, a, just a, a good, solid moral base and someone that they feel like they trust to do the right thing. That's number one. Number two, uh, having been on the planning commission, I think I have a pretty good view of, of what the vision and the strategic plan of the community is. And, and I think that whoever we the interviewees are going to have to we're going to have to have ask some questions about whether or not they share that vision of where the community is going and then third vision is one thing but i think that this person needs to have a a track record of of being a doer you know mm -hmm. having a vision is thinking but <laughs> doing is actually converting your vision into reality and looking at someone in, who has a past history of, of being able to get things done. So those are the three things I'm looking for. It, it's not written out any place about what the vision for the Carrieville school system is. Uh, everybody would say I'm for good education. Um, how would you describe your vision or what you think it should be for Carrieville? Well, and, and this is this, I'll explain a little bit more, but you know, everyone that probably sits in this seat will probably say that they want excellence, and uh, that's that's kind of a, one of the guiding pr uh, principles w to this new system will be excellence. There's lots of moving parts to a school system. You have uh, you have you have sports. You have the uh, honors programs, and you have the non-honors programs that where a lot of the kids, and I think that w what I aspire to is to have good teachers in every position, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's throughout the system. I, you know, some systems will concentrate on the arts program, or some are, are good in sports, but I, I would like to have excellence throughout throughout the throughout the system, um, and in that regard, I think that the we are blessed in this community of having a level of parental support that most school systems would die for. I mean, the Collier, I'm told that the Collierville PTA is the biggest PTA in the state of Tennessee. Hmm. The it's, it's almost all parents I remember there. And I went to the open house and it's just huge. I mean, I remember mm -hmm. 
PTAs where you have four or five people show up. The, this is a, the, the parents show up and they're very supportive. And uh, that is something that's got to remain. And um, in order for that to happen, you have to have continuing and uninhibited communication going back and forth between the superintendent and the teachers, teachers and the students, and school system and parents. And, and uh, as an overlay uh, to that, you would have the school system communicating with the community in various ways. So I think that that's one of the keys is the, the, the open and continuing communication. Uh, there's going to be a lot of issues that the school boards are going to need to decide about, uh, and there's going to be some conflicts. Um, uh, what special strength would you bring to the school board in dealing with the conflicts or the stresses of just all the decision making that's going to need to take place? Well, there will be, and there, there will be disagreements about uh, policies, there'll be disagreements about uh, just about a lot of things. Uh, what I think is, uh, I think is my, in my career, uh, I've built a reputation as being a facilitator, uh, someone who can go into a, a, con a conflicting situation and, and get the parties to talk and almost like a mediator in some sense. Uh, I'm not bombastic, I don't yell, I don't, uh, you know, uh, throw things or anything. I'm pretty calm and uh, so I think that um, being, a, being a role, as a role as a facilitator will be very important. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, there's, there's no one in the list of candidates that, that I, I dislike or couldn't work with. I mean, I think that they, like I told you coming in, I think we're blessed to have really good candidates top to bottom. And um, so I think that with the common, common goals, we can work through these conflicts, whatever they will be. And uh, uh, the only problem is, you know, we're going to have to act quickly. I mean, we don't have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and one of the one of the reasons I got in this race was because um, there's a lot to be done, and it's got to be done correctly. And if we don't do it right the first time, and for the right reasons. Uh, it's going, it may take years to undo that damage, so we're going to have to be very careful, but we're going to have to be expeditious in how, how we act, mm -hmm. and that's not easy combination <laughs> to be in, be in a hurry and, uh, and do it right, but that's, that's the challenge we face. Yeah. Um, speaking of, of conflict, uh, let's say you're, you're shopping at Home Depot and a citizen comes up and says, uh, little Johnny hates his teacher, his teacher doesn't do a good job, um, and I voted for you and now they expect you to do something. Uh, what would you do in a situation like that? I'd call the superintendent. The superintendent, the teachers, the superintendent hires the teachers and the staff and they work for him. Uh, I've seen a situation where you get school board me members who get involved in the middle of, of, of school situations and that's really not our role. Uh, I know that the citizens out there are going to say, but, you know, I elected you. I didn't elect the superintendent. But uh, it really is the role of the superintendent. That said, I would certainly do my best to bring it to the attention of the right people who could fix the problem. And if it's not fixed, I would be happy for the citizen to bring it back to my attention, and I would work on it again. But... Uh, but as far as, you know, talking to disciplining teachers or changing kids' schools or classes, that's not really the role of the school board member. Okay. So we're, we're supposed to be a policy-making mm -hmm. uh, body. So. Well, uh, we appreciate you being willing to, to be a public servant and, uh, and wish you well in your endeavors. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an honor to run for this office and it is humbling to see your name on signs and people to come up and offer you offer support for you and put their confidence in you 
it really is a humbling thing and, and, and uh, I take it very seriously and uh, I look forward to working with uh, everybody. Oh, that's great. Thank you for Thank coming you. in. All right.